another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And to join me on today's episode of The Spicy Life, we have the incredible, the amazing <laughs> Melissa and Kevin Fredericks. The crowd Woo-hoo! goes wild. Hello, everybody. Okay, I'm going to read these bios, which are pretty incredible. But I'm giving you the consolidated version, okay? So you know who is sitting amongst us. Okay, <laughs> Melissa Fredericks, known as Miss Kev on stage, is a multifaceted, multi-talented influencer and mogul. With her quick wit, girl next door relatability, and thoughtful wisdom, she has made a name for herself in entertainment. Melissa does it all. She sure does. She's an established influencer, New York Times bestselling author. The book is Marriage Be Hard. Mm-hmm. She's a podcast and game show host, entrepreneur, and motivational speaker. And she lives with her husband, Kevin, two sons, Isaiah and Josiah. Josiah, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And star of family, star of the family. Oh, their dog, Monty. I see Monty all the time up in your guys' book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yes. know Monty. Mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, who you also known as Kevin on stage, you guys are very familiar with him. He is a multi habit entertainer, comedian, and New York Times bestselling author, Marriage Be Hard. Kevin most recently toured North America and Europe, headlining the NAACP award winning show, Here's the Thing, and Live Nation stand up comedy tour, The Bald Brothers 2023. As a digital influencer, Kevin has billions of mu- views across all platforms. Oh, you guys. Billions and billions. Billions and billions. Billions and billions. Billions, and billions. <laughs> billions, and billions. <laughs> hundreds of billions. <laughs> billions, billions and billions. The most in the history of the world. <laughs> you guys also will have recognized uh, me and some of Kevin's like videos. Yes. We've, been, we've been creating content since your uh, all deaf digital days, like yes. back in the day when that first started. It's a very long relationship. Yes. Um, yes. But I love to have like seen your guys um, grow. You guys also might, uh, you, th- their career has grown tremendously throughout the years i remember like begging you guys even for an interview to come in on when i was at Mm 92.3 and they're like spicy you got to do this podcast in addition to your job and i'm like i'm gonna ask melissa and kevin (laughs) (laughs) and you guys came through then Mm -hmm. a lot harder to get y'all now though (laughs) it's a lot harder for me to go to the grocery store today that part (laughs) but you guys have really done an incredible job and i think that being in the relationship industry you guys have uh, done a phenomenal job of like publicly showcasing your guys' relationship and ap- what appears to be extreme vulnerability. And I think that it's very endearing, which it, it, and also very funny. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to bring you guys on the show to talk somewhat about the book, to talk about how hard marriage is, but also like conflict resolve or let's say uh, conflict management. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like that. Um, but what we're going to start with is. The spice breaker. Okay? okay. This is where you guys get to share and open up. You get to tell us, and we'll start with you, Melissa. Ooh. When did you first fall in love with yourself? Ooh, oh. with myself. That moment that you're like, I'm a baddie. Okay. When is that moment that you realized you were Ooh. lovable? You loved you. Okay. I would say, let me think, let me think, let me think. I would say I wrote a book when we first moved to LA called The Journey to Self Love. And that was probably the reflection of me realizing I had fallen in love with myself. But it's it's a journey though, right? Because like there's still I be having I have a, a meeting with my therapist tomorrow about something we talked about last week, and I realized it's something I need to work on still. <laughs> um, but I would say around 27 or so, I would say that's probably the start of my journey of like falling in love. And for me, I think falling in love with yourself is really more about acceptance. Mm-hmm. Um, like realizing you're good enough flaws and all regardless. Yeah. You know? um, and so I would say, yeah, it started at 27 and I feel like upon turning 40, I feel like there's another kind of metamorphosis happening mm. as well. Hmm? 41. I said upon turning 40. Oh. I didn't say like how old I am now. Oh. See how you try to correct me? Oh. It, I won't. She said, Melissa, we're going to start with oh. you. Okay. okay. Very good. <laughs> Kev, what is the moment that you fell in love with yourself? You know, I've never thought about this, nor have I ever been asked anything remotely close to good. this. Good. Mm-hmm. Happy that it happened on The Spicy Life. Yeah. I'm, I was really thinking, uh, I don't know that I ever felt like I didn't love myself. Mm-hmm. I feel like I did like start to embrace more of myself Mm -hmm. I think as I got older um I think one time I I used to be believe it or not ashamed of my body a little more than I am (laughs) now you wouldn't believe it now how much I have my shirt off but I remember we went to Hawaii Melissa and I this must have been in 2008 or Mm 9 I believe was our first time in Hawaii Melissa well together Melissa used to live there 
And I remember um, I never been a person that swam with my shirt mm-hmm. on, but I was walking around the beach with my shirt on. I just was like, I ain't really comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man boobs. And I remember seeing all these people of all these different body types just like living their life. Mm. And I was like, don't nobody care. Why yeah, am I tripping? I don't want that freedom. I, and, I, I, and I literally at that moment, I think I stopped caring. And I think that was the final piece. But like mm-hmm. I always loved myself, but I wasn't always in love with like how I looked. And then also in Hawaii, we went to the Polynesian Culture, Culture Center and I realized, oh, if I were Samoan, I, I would wish I was bigger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think some of it is cultural. Yeah. Sure. So I think um, and then like I've, I've had some homies who are really small and they were like, oh, I can never gain weight. And I'm like, there's people who are unhappy because they're too skinny. Yeah. So I think at that point, the like preconceived notions of what it felt like to look a certain way yeah. was probably my last thing. I've always kind of been a very confident uh, lover of myself. Yeah. But I just didn't love my whole body the way it is. And I think that was probably the the last piece. I still kind of struggle, you know, just because of American society so highly values yeah. the perfect fit body. But I, I, I feel like I'd be like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do? You know, so I think you're not going to uh, change it. I'm not going to change okay. it. Man. I, metabolism is tripping now. I'm happily married. Melissa don't be tripping. So I'll be like, bro, I'm, I'm good. But this lends to what you were describing as self-love. You feel like it's self-acceptance. Absolutely. True. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but here's where I'm going to push a little bit. Um, I like that you gave the moment. Okay. But mm-hmm. anytime that someone says, I feel like I've always loved myself. Mm-hmm. I poke and I say, okay, now because you said that, now you have to tell me when you felt out of love with yourself and how you got back in love with yourself. Was mm-hmm. there ever a moment that you felt out of love with yourself? Out of love with myself? Yeah, where you were actually not liking who you were, your decision making, your experience. You kind of lost yourself. You were lost. Okay. <sighs> I don't know if I necessarily felt out of love with myself, but I can give this and maybe this we'll see if this is mm-hmm. uh, good enough. <laughs> uh, Present it. <laughs> I remember as a comedian, I, I, I agree with what Melissa said. I feel like it's such a journey. Mm-hmm. It's, it's hard to pick out one moment, but I remember I, I, I started in the church doing comedy and to this day, co- my comedy is heavily in the church. Yeah. Right. Cause it's my greatest experience factor to pull from and i remember when i moved to la there was like whispers of like kev's only funny in the church blah 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 he can't he can't do stuff if it ain't got nothing to do with church so i i literally did a whole tour where i didn't do any jokes about the about the church mm. right and it was fine it was cool but towards the end i realized like what why am i doing something to prove to whispers in the wind mm. that i can do whatever Instead of playing to my actual strengths. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the last time I let somebody else define what mm-hmm. somebody else's opinion define yeah. who I am. And I think in that moment, it, it's allowed me more freedom and creativity to embrace like this is what makes me unique. It's what makes me happy. It's yeah. my it's my special sauce. Um, you know, it's like saying, Monty, don't talk about relationships. What are you doing? Like, I'm sure you still be an amazing host, but like you excel in a certain area. Y'all don't want me to get finance advice. Yeah. (laughs) So I think letting go of what, uh, the moment I fell out was when I let people's version of what comedy should be influence how I approached what I love. I'd never done anything like that. And from that moment on, from the end of that tour on, I was like, I'm never going to do that again. Mm. I'm going to do whatever I feel like is funny, best, what I want to attack creatively. And I think that's the only time I fell out of my, and I found my, I fell back in by going back to what I know yeah. and leaning by on authenticity. Women, on authenticity. But did, so I'm just curious because, you know, you made all these switch ups uh, to appease what you thought other people wanted. Yeah. Was there like this, like, aha moment like what was what made you snap out of that phase or that like rhythm have not that, that hypnosis of like appeasing others yeah I think I I was on stage just doing my thing freely mm-hmm. and I realized like you are holding yourself back mm-hmm. by trying to fit into this box that other people have decided is a box you need to fit fit into and I was just doing whatever came naturally came and it was like flowing out of me. People were crying, laughing. I was having a good time. And I realized like you, you've been, you, you've been tripping. Yeah. Like you've let people inside your head so much, mm-hmm. you know, cause part of my competitiveness is I've got to prove everybody wrong. Yeah. 
But so, but at that moment, I realized I some things I don't care what you think. Yeah. Uh, I'm good with this. So that was probably the last thing because I think in the past I was like always trying to prove I could do this and then I can do this and I was like always going to prove to each individual each individual person that I could be what they wanted me to be. And the more I did that, the more I wasn't who I actually am. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the reason I have popularity is because people see their selves in me. Yeah. Like we For share sure. the same, <laughs> you know, like we grew up similar. We have yeah. similar ideas. And I think um, by getting away from that, I was like not who I truly was. Yeah. And I think that's probably the, the moment. But that took some time. Uh, this, this is, is probably a great like example. A, that yeah. I wanted more of that. I wanted the like, okay, life has not been perfect for you, Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. That was doubt? probably over a year. Or, was the, yeah, or two. the yeah. challenges. Okay, that's Absolutely. beautiful. Thank you both for sharing the spice yeah, breaker. Of course. But Kevin, to your point about caring what other people think, mm -hmm. now what are the most important voices to you that matter? Outside of God's voice, who else? Probably mostly my own. Like, I think I... I want to make sure I'm happy and I can stand by everything that I create. And also sometimes uh, I, I check in with Melissa. I literally sent her a video today. Shout uh, out to just Melissa. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, is this insensitive? And she was like, not really. But if you want to wrap it up, you can do this. So then I was like, what if I just change and do a different? And I literally just posted it. And she was like, that's probably better. But I don't think that's like, she's just a trusted person. Yeah who I know ain't going to have me out there looking crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think I trust my voice and then probably hers. And then as I don't know anybody else's. <laughs> Melissa, <laughs> Melissa, whose voice do you trust the um, most? I would definitely say Kevin's voice. I actually use him as a sounding board quite a bit. And um, I am learning to actually put me in first position though mm. I'm, I'm going the through the, the process of learning to trust myself and my voice and my intuition and my gut like all of that also I think it's part of self-love as well but yeah. like I'm I'm in the process of that um but for the most part I use Kevin as a sounding board for sure that's what a partnership is for oh, right yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure <laughs> absolutely but I do want to hear how did we earn that position so be in the number one spot right so mm -hmm. it's like knight him with the number one spot mm -hmm. to have your ear how did Kevin earn that what did he do that you were like this is my most trusted advisor yeah I think well first of all we've been together for since I was 16 yeah high school so, sweethearts yeah high school sweethearts. <laughs> so a lot of you know trust is time mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of time here where he has proven to be trustworthy right and then I've always said this like uh I always say bet on black bet on Kevin on stage those are like <laughs> my my two things and so so he makes um, he makes solid business decisions. He makes solid personal decisions. He makes really good decisions. And so I just use that as like, what do you think about this? Or mm -hmm. what do you think about this? I mean, again, some of it I have to be like, I don't actually think I agree with it. Yeah. And that's fine. <laughs> It might be right for you, but I don't think it's right for me, and that's totally fine. Um, but he has just proven over time. I don't I don't know that I can point to one thing as much as like this is. 25 years of relationship here yeah and in that time he's proven to make solid decisions okay the same question to you how did she earn that trust spot i think trusting melissa has been the same thing over time but i think if we want to be really honest and vulnerable and That's free I here want. i am very stubborn mm. and hard-headed and nobody's voice is more right than mine mm. melissa when she's been a dissenting voice and i've like either ignored her or like heard her out, but went another way and failed at the thing that has earned the trust. Cause it's like, Oh snap. If you would have just listened to her, she was right about this. Mm -hmm. She was right about that. She was right about that. But I don't know why my natural disposition is nah, you wrong. Mm. <laughs> that is it though. <laughs> After all these years, we still say, nah, you're wrong. I think b this is this is my hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Go with me. Okay. Go with me. I'm interested to hear in this. In order to be in Hollywood where everybody's telling you no mm. and, in, and to see really what you this. want for your life in a world that doesn't look like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I work at Boeing and I'm like, one day I'm going to move to L.A. and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to have my own private plane. Yep. And then somebody's like, do you have these reports? And I'm like, yep, sure do. <laughs> you have to like block out realism and just trust mm. it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. 
uh, to start off and know I want a million subscribers. I want this. And these videos are getting 37 views, 42 views. And you're like, I don't care every day, day after day. I'm going to consider, I'm going to do it. And you know, so you start to believe only your voice. Because any dissent could be, because, you know, your own mind will be like, yeah. you ain't going to make it. You're like, no, you shut up. Listen, this part of my mind that's going to say, I'm going to make it. And then other people will be like, you ain't going to do this. You, why are you moving to L.A.? Like, all that type of stuff. I think I block all that out. Mm. And then it's hard to readjust and start to let some <laughs> in. So I think that's the drawback of being so driven and ambitious is, like, you listen only to your own voice, the one that's telling you to go. And anything that feels like dissent feels like, it just gets lumped in with the other negativity that's yeah. already in your mind. So that's what I think it came from. But uh, it has never been wrong. I think one of the things Melissa and I kind of settled on is like, you know, she has this thing where um, she, I'm the kite, she's the string. And you need both to succeed because the kite wants to fly, but the string has to both keep you grounded. And yeah. if you don't, it's going to fly, fly off and away. fall. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think with her, I, you know, and, and me together, it's like, we will succeed at my greatest ambitions, but if we fail, we will fail at her safety net. And I used to think of her mm-hmm. as like not believing in me and all that yeah. stuff. And really her belief is like, I want to make sure if we fall, I, you could fly all the way up there. You could yeah. do your tyro walk, but if you fall, I don't want you to die. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm sure you can make it, but yeah. let me just build this net. Just so case. if you fall, <laughs> I got you. Yeah. And looking at her like that has been more, um, advantageous for me as opposed to like you're my enemy yeah you don't believe in me which is what my mind used to say (laughs) okay you guys have to talk about this like high level belief because i think we're living at a time even though security has always been uh, a part of the purpose of marriage right we've always wanted to be with somebody who protects us that makes us feel secure emotionally physically and financially that's usually a prerequisite for women you got together with Kevin as high school sweethearts, your non-negotiables and your deal breakers probably weren't like to the extreme Mm -hmm. as some of the grown woman stuff that we're on now. But through it all, you've stayed by his side, even as he's a dreamer, even as he has had these like crazy visions of what his life was going to look like. Mm -hmm. I need to hear the, what did you tell yourself? What was that conversation? Because what he was telling you that he wanted to do, or even the things that he's even doing now There is no set path or no straight line for that. So how as a partner, when you are married to a dreamer, how do you balance that, the security element that we constantly need in order to feel safe as a woman? Yeah, I think that uh, I used to say these three things, dream, plan, move, and faith. And I think for a lot of times that for dreamers, the planning part, which often for someone that's going to be the string you need, uh, the plan allows for safety. Yeah. You know, it allows for the pivot. It allows for, okay, you want a tightrope. What if the wind blows? Yeah. Because you can't control the wind. Yeah. You can control you. But if the wind blows, (laughs) what you going to do? You know? screwed. (laughs) Correct. And so we need to plan for that. What does the safety plan look like if you get knocked off your path? If things don't go according to plan that you say, you know, the things that you control, that all happens and something uncontrollable happens. What then? And so for me, I think the the first part is having a discussion and a plan. And even if I we even if I didn't have full confidence that Kevin's plan was going because you know Kev's like I'm about to go on the road I'm about to sell the show if it's a <laughs> thousand seaters I'm selling a thousand yeah. seats and so You're therefore lucky there's not two thousand yes because <laughs> correct and so if the budget is a million dollars then guess what I'm gonna make two flip it and reverse it we got that back no yeah. problem yeah. Man, yes. yes and I'm like but but if it don't, we got to mortgage the house. I'm so confused. What happens after <laughs> if it doesn't work, you know? And so <laughs> it's sitting, even, again, the point that I'm making is even if I wasn't so sure in like Kevin's dream plan, I was comfortable at the very least in the fail safe. Mm. And so I didn't stop working my nine to five mm-hmm. until 2018. Mm. I've only been doing this for well, Chad has been a long time now, huh? Six years? This is a long time to, 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 to do your three points of planning. What was it? Planning, plan, faith, dream, uh, plan, dream, move dream plan, 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 move, move and faith. Because I That's think, a long time. <laughs> yeah, it is. Actually, you're right. That's some Bible faith yeah, right there. <laughs> it, well, and because part of it was ensuring that um, things were solid. Yeah. Like, I've always been the one, if, if, if it doesn't go to plan, I know I have 
a paycheck coming every two weeks. Yeah. I know that we have insurance, health insurance. I know we have a 401k and I know the boys are covered in the event something goes wrong. And so I was confident in that and it allowed him to dream. I think a lot of times what happens is that when, when you haven't recognized your partner, so there's two parts, right? Mm-hmm. This is something we had to grow into. I'm not telling you that we knew all the time. We didn't. This something we had to grow into. <laughs> you realize. Yeah, you realize. When you're married to a dreamer, oftentimes they look at the strength, right? If we go with that analogy, as um, they are anti, yes, the enemy. They're Mm. anti their dream, right? And sometimes as the string, you can see the dreamer as being irresponsible mm. because you're making all of these decisions in pursuit of this dream. And it's almost, it almost feel, can feel reckless. Like you're just doing these things and you're putting our family yeah. at risk. What are these things? <laughs> and so if you can reconcile that you need both and sit down and come to a plan together that allows for the comfort, I think that's when you become on the same side. Yeah. I think when we go, especially as a string, right, you feel bad. Like, I don't want to be the person that doesn't allow my spouse's <laughs> dream to come true. I don't want to be that person. So, like, let's go do it. And then you abandon your safety net. You don't plan for the just in case. And when things inevitably go wrong, you can look at us today and say, clearly things have gone all right. They haven't. Things There's have challenges. gone There's wrong. Challenge. Many of things that we have not shared publicly <laughs> have gone wrong, right? Once you can appreciate what you each bring to the table, that allows you to have a plan that's secure. Going into a dream with reckless abandon is not smart. It's not using wisdom and it's not a good idea. And if you're not in a position financially Mm -hmm. to do those things, then that's a real life discussion you have to have with the dreamer. And then the dreamer has to be realistic enough to say, you're right. So let's put a plan in place, which is what we had to do. Because yeah. like we're at Boeing, I'm thinking we're at Boeing, we're making all this You're money. Like, our kids yeah. are in private school. This is safety <laughs> and security. These are important to me. Why are we going to leave our good, good jobs and move to L.A.? Mm. Why? Well, this is what I want to do. Okay, so the only way it's going to work for me is we start saving now. Mm. We need these things in place and start saving now in order to support. If things don't go right in L.A., I know we have some things set aside for the just, just, just in case. And one of the things that was in the plan was uh, the boys were part of this little, um, what was it called? Awesomeness TV. Mm-hmm. And they was up for renewal on the contract. Oh, boy. And and we tried to negotiate double. They said, not only is you not, not only <laughs> is you not, okay, is you not going to get double, we're going to cancel this whole thing. Ooh. And when I tell you, you talk about somebody counting money before they got a check. <laughs> I said, well, we going to go back? Because we first yeah, tried we to live in, in dinners Pas- thinking you had a check over yes. there. <laughs> we was going to live in Pasadena at first until we saw the prices. Listen. So I said, oh, listen, they, they, we, they got they to double us up. We number one on the channel. They, we consistent. They got to. They don't. And they Matter of fact, it. they don't even have to. It was never in my mind that they would. Okay, they don't give us a raise. Fine. Yeah. But firing us? Ugh. <laughs> you don't want the show no more? Ugh. So, yeah, uh, and that's the funny thing about being a dreamer. None of those losses ever register. Mm. Every t- next idea is going to work. Baby, it don't matter how many times I fail, the next one going to work. Okay. So I, I be learning my lesson, but I don't be learning my lesson. <laughs> okay, Kev, this is supposed to, so you guys, this is, I wanted to do a conversation about conflict resolve, but this is still touching on it, and I still have to hit on energy because this is going to sit with a lot of people who are in relationship, right? Where they feel like, and what kind of sounds like, we're going to talk energy. I know we weren't going to go energy, but I want to talk energy just a little bit. Melissa, this is, you being in a relationship with the creative, Mm -hmm. let's talk masculine feminine energy. Mm -hmm. Creatives are, are, they, it is art. It is free flowing. It is flexible. It is spontaneity. Masculine energy is stability, security, direction, uh, planning. So both energies live within all of us okay so masculine feminine lives within me masculine feminine lives within you and within kevin but for the creative space we often know that that is somewhat feminine energy when it's not built on stability because stability is masculine energy a lot of women would be uncomfortable feeling like they have to be the planner they have to be the person who's keeping things grounded and the anchor and reinforcing that how did you reconcile that part with okay i'm with a creative this is going to put me more in the position of masculine energy where i have to direct and i kind of have to lead how did you balance that i 
didn't lead the break that down okay because people will interpret it as oh you led the i did not uh i was i was definitely stable right like i i held the job and i did the things but when it was time to move to la my husband led that effort Mm. he came through he heard my concerns Mm -hmm. and then he said this is the plan Mm. so of course it's with my I think these are the things we should do. <laughs> but he came to me. Tell me I'm lying. I know. This, oh. I, I'm looking great. Oh. Yes. <laughs> um, Keep going. Yes. I, just out for socials. Yes. I, I, I think that, I think that as women mm-hmm. and being in partnership, there is an ebb and flow. Yeah. And there are seasons. Yep. And during the season when we were working uh, our nine to fives and I, I saw my husband sad. <laughs> oh my God, this baby was sad. Away. I mean, praying to God that if this is not what you have put inside of me to bring to reality, yeah. then take it away. Mm. I don't want this desire to be great if I can't be great mm. in the way that I see. That impacts me as a wife where I'm like, okay, well, God, if you put it in him, yeah. uh, dream, plan, move in faith. Yeah, I need you to direct us in this way. I need you to lay this out and allow his dreams, even if I can't see it. And I couldn't mm. see it. I didn't have, when we're moving in faith, we're moving, for me, he's moving in the faith. I'm moving by the plan. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if any of this is going to work. But I know on paper, we got a little bit of money. It wasn't much. Once I moved here, I realized, but it was a little something. But so for me, I still allowed him to be in a space where he is still the man of the household. The other thing that I think is important here is um, even if your husband isn't leading, right? Like in the traditional sense or what I'm saying Kevin did, I don't think that um, that is something that has to be allowed. Meaning you don't have to attack his ego. Mm. You don't have to make him feel less than, mm. especially as women, your words can be sharp Ooh, yeah. and they hold weight. For sure. And these are things that your man relationship, it goes both ways. Right. But we're talking in this scenario about the man, they hold weight and they carry, um, they, 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 they stay with them for a long time. <clears throat> and so I was, I never belittled Kevin. When he got fired, never. It was never my money. Mm-hmm. It was never I'm the one getting up. It was never any of that. I recognize that there we are in a partnership and we are in a season. Mm. And I don't want to tear down my man, my husband, in this season because who knew where we would be today? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so for me, I don't know if I have a right answer as to why I didn't, but most certainly did not. I think it's perspective. I think you were not looking at it like, oh, I'm in the driver's seat. Mm-hmm. I'm in my masculine energy. I'm leading. I think you still look to him to be led from what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And based on him hearing you, that was actually him hearing you. I was actually him and his masculine energy saying like, I hear you, mm-hmm. woman. I will oblige. <laughs> Once you saw that you got that from him, you were able to submit. You were able to give into those like these are my concessions yeah yeah (laughs) these are my requirements Mm -hmm. these are the things that i need and i will allow for you to continue in this direction yeah but like this is but but this is what i feel like is important in partnership and i think that if it doesn't look a certain way it doesn't feel a certain Mm -hmm. way we get caught in this like i don't want to be in my masculine energy and it's like we need balance like we need to be able to pivot back and forth and i love that you're saying like seasons because he was in a season Mm mm-hmm now he's in a probably abundance thriving season. <clears throat> Completely different season. Yeah. Completely different season. And I think I love that you use the word submit because that touches on like my churchiness as well. But like I always say that submission just means being under a mission. Yeah. Under the same household mission. And so if he has a dream and I'm trying to stay under here, your house is divided. And so part of submission is just what you're saying to me. Let me tell you my concerns. Financial security is important to me. This is very, very important to me. So if we're going to go out and and risk it all, I need to know there's a floor to our loss. 
because I'm not interested in being homeless. I'm not interested in, you know, trying to make ends meet and feed our kids. I'm not yeah. interested in that. Not when God has allowed us to be two able, smart bodies yep. that can get up and get a job. No, like if we can do that, we need to be doing that. So if we're going to do something else that's risky, then we need to ensure that it's smart and we move with wisdom. We could be risky, but we need to be smart with it. Calculated risk. Calculated risk. Calculated risk. But what about the woman who can't get through to her man? So Kevin listened to you. Kevin came back and said, okay, I hear you, woman. Thank you, God, for giving me this woman. Amen. I'm going to listen. Okay? (laughs) He came up with a plan. But what about the guy who you are like, baby, we need a plan. We need security. We need to do these things. We need our net. And he's not taking into account what the woman says. Are there different recommendations that you have or different approaches that you have for the man that's not listening? He's not making her feel safe. She feels like she is just flying out there in the wind with him. Yeah, uh, obviously therapy, because it's always good to go to a third party. Because they, you, your therapist will say the exact same thing you told your husband. But it hit different. But it hit he different listens. coming from that other person. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> but it be different, but it be the same. Um. Or it'd be the same, but it'd be different. So anyway, number one, always a third party there to kind of intermediate and 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 transact what you are saying and explain it definitely. And then, then number two, I would also um, consider your approach. I think that um, one of the things I've I've heard people say and I've kind of adopted as well is uh, is leading with your vulnerable emotions. Mm -hmm. And so if you're attacking and it looks like belittling or you're irresponsible or whatever, instead of simply saying, listen, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. I do. But if you get out on this tightrope, what if the wind blows? Mm -hmm. And that scares me. Yeah. This is not about you. I'm willing to go with you, but I'm I I'm I'm scared. And what would make me feel comfortable to get on that tightrope with you is knowing there is a safety net yep. below us. And I will hold your hand. I will be there with you. And yep. if you fall, I'm falling with you. But I can't comfortably go out on that tightrope with yeah. you without knowing there's a safety net. Can we talk about what that looks like. Mm. The other thing is the the kite has to be able to hear that in a way where he or she doesn't hear you don't believe in me. Yeah. You your defenses also have to come down. So your wife or your husband they're not saying I don't believe in you, you stupid, you don't know what you're doing, you're they're not saying that. They're trying to say <laughs> the way God designed me <laughs> is such that This is important. Yeah. And as your partner, I want us to be on the same page. It's so important to me that I'm there to support you. And in order for me to be all in, this is what I need to feel comfortable. And really, that's really what they're saying. But it doesn't always come out that soft. Yeah, for sure. I think it's it's a hard relationship. I feel like in your guys' dynamic, though, I'm... Kevin, <laughs> I'm the kite, <laughs> and my husband is the string. Like, to your example, because he is the person who's like, what's our game plan? What's mm-hmm. our, like, we need to come, you know, back to, like, the plan, but isn't aligned with the plan and the goal. Mm-hmm. And so I think that you're right to what we need in balance, because I'm the one that's like, I just booked a show. I'm moving for a month. Watch our baby. <laughs> and he's like, what? Watch our baby, man. Yeah. We got to go like, more Vancouver. <laughs> Out of here, do <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, it's one of those, like, you know, that he has to be like, wait, 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 okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> what does this look like? Mm-hmm. How are we, what are we going to implement? But we've been in, on the same, like, trajectory, working towards the goal, working towards mm-hmm. the goal. And he's been able to provide that for me. But when it's a, a gender reversal, mm-hmm. it's a lot harder for women, I think, to be comfortable mm-hmm. with that. And now I'm in a place where I, where eventually I will be like, hey, leave your job, come be with me full time, like Kevin was able to do mm-hmm. with you. Mm-hmm. And we're working towards that. I'll be able to flip that. But I think you put it in such great perspective, mm-hmm. right? It's like you didn't see him as weak, small. Mm-hmm. You you believed in him, and his faith alone in himself actually feels like it helped you buy into the dream. Absolutely. That he- this is incredible. Absolutely. Kev's faith in himself provides so much uh, (laughs) faith in me. And that's why I say bet on black, bet on Kev on stage. It doesn't matter. He's playing basketball. I I think my husband's going to win. He's running a race. I think my husband's going to win. He's playing baseball. I think my husband's going to win. Okay. I know it's not always, though, dreams and laughs and happiness in the home. I want us to talk about hard stuff. Arguments. Mm Mm-hmm. How do they start? Who's usually initiator? Okay. And how do we end them? How do we reconcile? How do we heal them? How do we get through them? I start them. He apologizes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it may not look exactly like that, but essentially, <laughs> correct. Okay, give me give me this scenario. You have a problem with something, you bring it to his attention, or you you go on the attack first. What does that no, usually look like? No, so typically for me, actually, it takes me because I do try to be um, careful with my words and make sure that whatever issue that I'm having is like. A, a issue that he can resolve or it is about him and not about me. Mm-hmm. It takes me a little while to like kind of work through that, to be honest. Mm. Um, but then once I have my words, I will be like, so listen, I have been wanting to talk to you about this for like four weeks and you probably noticed my energy been off, but I couldn't figure it out. So now mm. is the time that I want to say all these things you've been doing, get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, Kev, how does it happen? It's very much like that. Okay, so uh, she's not presenting things to you as it happens. She's building, no. building. So passive or passive aggressive? No. Okay. I wouldn't say passive aggressive. I would say. It feels aggressive when she comes. It feels <laughs> aggressive, but I, I, I wouldn't say it. passive aggressive. I feel like it's the police versus the feds. The police come and knock on your door, ask mm-hmm. you a question. The feds build a case and then present to you the case that's put together mm. and then it's more like, Oh dang, you, you have, I'm an examples person. Like what I do, how'd I did it? Give me 17 examples <laughs> that like, prove your I point. Was, my iPhone notes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have on September 17th. <laughs> so I think one thing we've been working on lately, I'd say over the last six to nine months is not getting to the point of where you've built up all these, mm-hmm. you know, like if we can nip it in the bud closer to the point of infraction. Yeah you might realize sometimes it's not even uh, what you thought, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a little bit of your feelings, a little trauma, a little trigger, whatever Mm -hmm. will cause you to interpret something. Like I'll give you a quick example. It wasn't really even a full argument, but we were talking about a project that I wanted to do, right? Because I'm very creative to the point where like when I make money, I want to use that money to make projects. (laughs) To make money. Yeah. And Melissa said, uh, she said, oh, I want you, you know, you should be able to make your vanity projects. And I was like, she was like, I don't, you know, what I mean by vanity <laughs> is like, yeah. you should be allowed. And I said, I, could you use the word passion project? Yeah. Because <laughs> passion feels different than vanity. Correct. But I think what helps alleviate some arguments, a lot of arguments, a friend of mine said some version of this. He said he he's had a better view of the world when he approaches it as if everybody has good intentions. Mm. And I think understanding that Melissa is never in our relationship I can hand, hand to God in 25 years, never approach me with malice. Mm. And like, I'm just finna, we just finna get into yeah. it. So because we have, I have that track record of knowing she's not finna just go at me to go at me. Then I can, when she says vanity project and my ego is like vanity project, mm-hmm. it can be like, when she says, that's not what I meant. I can hear her on that. Even though your knee jerk reaction to be like, it ain't no vanity project, even though it's semantics, vanity passion, whatever. So I think what eliminates some of the angst is giving your spouse the benefit of the doubt. And in our case, luckily that's um, earned. I think the other thing is for these fights, we've, we do a good job um, of, of letting the issue be the issue as opposed to attacking Mm. the person as a result of the issue. That's important. Right. Yeah. And that that's learned and that's, you know, developed over time. Um, And even saying stuff like, when this happens, I feel like, as opposed to you did this. Yeah. Because if I say, Mari, you did this. Yeah. Right? If I say, um, Mari, when we got here, you were late. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if you weren't, your your knee-jerk reaction is to be like, first of all, I wasn't. Like, <laughs> you're going to defend yourself. <laughs> Human nature. If I say, hey, Mari. We'll go on the defense. Yeah, yeah. No matter what. Even if, you, even, if you were, even if you actually were wrong. Yeah. If I say, hey, Mari, I got her at, you know, Four three fifty five. You didn't call us into four twelve. That made me feel like you didn't value my time. Your natural inclination would be like, oh, I, I didn't know. Yeah, we're you know what I'm saying like, and that's a simple approach yeah. of like, I felt like this when this happened. I felt like is a lot easier to to hear yeah. than you did. You did. It's a lot less of a success rate. So I think when we have our arguments, Melissa does a good job of being like. Uh, when this happens, it makes me feel, and then I can say, I didn't know it made you feel like that, or I will adjust, or X, Y, and Z. But I also heard in your earlier example when she accidentally used 
inappropriate or language that didn't so wet with you, right? Yeah. Like it didn't so well with you. You were like, no, oh, don't use the word vanity. Can we say passion projects, mm -hmm. right? It sounds like she, in that moment though, even acknowledged, mm, I used probably not the best choice of words for my partner. Yeah. I'm seeing, I'm observing his behavior. Sure. My emotional intelligence is kicking in and I probably shouldn't have said that. Then you also articulated how what she said made you feel and actually asked, like you asked, like, can you, can we correct for this? Yes. Can we make a change in this? And so I think that takes like a certain level of self-awareness for you yeah. to realize what Therapy. you said. <laughs> Therapy. Therapy. <laughs> Therapy really has been super instrumental. I know this is being funny, but it has been super instrumental because you realize one, it, it's it's best use to me is it gives you tools to fight more fairly. Mm -hmm. um, because the therapist is not team Melissa or team Kevin, yeah. she's team the health of the relationship, then it's easier to see the problems for what they are. Yeah. As opposed to if she talks to her mom, she going to see it as her daughter's yeah. problem. And if I talk to my dad, well, this is tripping or whatever. There, It's it's harder for people. And, and internally, I'm always going to make sure I I'm right. And, and she's going to do the same thing. Your mind's going to be on your side yeah. before it's ever going to go against you. But your therapist, usually if they're good, they're going to be making sure that you guys grow together regardless of who's right in this instance. Yeah. You know, and I think um, early on, because I'm competitive again, a lot of times it was my goal to win mm. the argument. I remember there's a funny story we must have. I'm a terrible driver. I get in accidents, fall asleep at the road. Everything's bad. Oh, I, <laughs> I uh, never fall asleep at the road. Years ago, something happened, and Melissa had been frustrated because it was like I kept raising the insurance. It was a lot. She was like, "I'm not even gonna pay this ticket because blah blah blah." And I was like, "But if you don't pay that ticket, right. our, our insurance is gonna go up." Yeah. Like, and she was like, "You right, you know." So I feel like that was a moment where I realized, even if I'm on, on offense here uh -huh. and you're on defense, we're still on the same team. Yeah. And I think a lot of times in relationships, we see each other as opposing teams. When we are actually on the same team, we yeah. might just be playing different positions. So I think that type of viewpoint to start helps with arguments. Um, and therapy allows an, a neutral person to help facilitate that, kind of like a mediator, arbitrator, whatever that that is. And that's been truly helpful for us. To she, the point where we can have these arguments that would have been worse prior to therapy, we have them handle them better now. And, but I think that's the most important part, right? Yeah. Is like, can we get through the arguments? Because that's usually what creates yeah. the communication disasters. But you started off with saying that like you usually start it, Kevin apologizes. How do you get Kevin to see his error when he doesn't think that he's wrong? Because remember, he operates with always thinking that he's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how do you get him to see your perspective and apologize? Because a lot of women struggle with getting their man to do that. Yeah. Um, I would say that we usually both end up apologizing. I'm a little, a little being funny. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think we both end up apologizing because I think what happens when you're talking about like the, the miscommunication of communication failures is that we get stuck in our own narrative and what happens. Yeah. And you don't even realize there's a possibility that something else could have happened yeah so one time in therapy we brought um this is one of my favorite therapy stories this is literally what makes me like an advocate for therapy kev was on tour and i went to go visit um his tour stop and i'm excited to be here so i'm thinking we're going to get in the car together um after the show mm -hmm. and so after the show i can't exactly even remember how it went down but regardless he ended up being in a separate car what happened though? We had a new security guard that was starting. And in this moment, this was just like the perfect storm of timing. I was trying not to be pushy with Melissa. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, Greg and Mel had came to yep, my sister. Her yep. sister had came. Her sister was in one car with my brother-in-law, who's our tour manager. The other car was two comics, security guard and me. Our security guard is 6'5", 320 pounds. We are in an SUV. Her sister and her brother are in a little passenger car, four four car garage. He always gonna go where I'm going because he's it's his security job. guard. He's security guard. Okay. So I'm like, hey, what you finna do? Knowing that that guy, if I get in this little car, he gonna bring his Follow big too. Samoan self in this <laughs> car and be uncomfortable. So I said, hey, which car are you gonna ride in? And she was like, did you even answer? I don't know exactly where it, there was this basically, verbatim, but yeah, yeah, it was like, like, some, was like I'll, I'll ride with my sister. 
the way that I took the question, it was like, why are you asking me this? It felt weird in the moment. Like, right. Like, I feel like you're trying not to ride with me. It just, I just <laughs> took it very personal. And so I'm like, this is like super weird. Why would you, I'm here. I flew all the way to who yeah. we in like Philadelphia Orlando. or where? Orlando. Orlando. Cause we had the, we was at the four seasons in Orlando. Great. <laughs> I flew the all Florida. the yeah. way. Right. I, we flew, I flew all the way to Florida to come to your show. And now you're asking me this. Like I just took it very personal. Yeah. And like, there's no possibility it the, shouldn't even be a doubt in your mind yes. in the car with you. Correct. <laughs> I flew out of way here. You're going to ask me. Sorry, I know I'm peeking in the mic. It's just, I'll be doing that all the time. Um, but like, you I know. You know I flew out the way out here to see you. And now you're asking me what car I'm riding. in. Duh, I'm riding with you. This feels weird. And like, you don't want me to ride with you. You want me to ride with my sister. Fine, I'll just ride with my sister. Like, it just yeah. got weird real quick. So anyway, fast forward, we have, we bring this to our therapist. And so we're, as we're talking about it, she's able to uncover all of these things that Kevin's saying. I'm able to say, you know, this is how I felt yeah. in the moment. And so what she had us do, and this is probably why I can't remember how it actually went down. What she had us Ooh. do is she said, um, let's just do a redo. Mm -hmm. Let's you Kevin because Kevin was like of course I wanted to ride with you like da -da 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 -da. Yeah. like of course and so I'm like well I wanted to say yes but I couldn't she's like we'll do it over Kevin you're coming out of the 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 club the, thank you you're coming out of the club ask Melissa if you want to ride with her do ask her how you wanted to ask her mm -hmm. Melissa you say what you want to say and the redo provided such like I don't even know the word like it smoothed over all of the holes that occurred in that moment, yeah. you know? And so I can't remember how I started on this story because we went down a whole tangent. Anyway, the point is that there are, apologies, there are a <laughs> lot of times in relationships where I have to apologize because I put all of this mm -hmm. in this example, but in general, all of this, um, these story because this is my therapy therapy speaking actions are just actions yes the story you put behind them is what causes the actions to have meaning mm -hmm. and so I put all of this this meaning behind yeah. what was happening that wasn't even what he was saying yep. to me but it's certainly what I felt and he was thinking something completely different yeah and so those conversations allow you to realize oh I'm sorry I made this like a really big deal. Yeah. And honestly, it really wasn't all that. And for him to say, I, I apologize because I also, I didn't realize how much it meant to you to ride with me. Yeah. And if I could have done it over, of course I wanted to ride with you. I didn't, I didn't realize it. I apologize. I'm sorry too. That I said, would you want to ride with me? And she heard, you, I don't want you to ride with Korea. me. Because I actually <laughs> said, do you want to ride with me? Or were you riding? Well, it was something like something that. Something like that. And what she wanted to hear is... I would like you to ride with yeah, me. Yeah, I want Here's you to be with car. me, baby. Yeah. yeah. And also, the funniest thing about this, the hotel was like nine minutes from where we were. So my mind, I was like, oh, if, if she rides with them or not, we're going to be together in nine minutes. We were together, but it was the longest nine minutes ever and then the longest night. <laughs> <laughs> but the therapy moment has really, it really it wiped out yeah. the bad um, <clears throat> moment and allowed, you know, the good moment, the, the therapized version yeah. to be... In your brain. It's what's most forefront what, for me. Yeah. It's but, literally my favorite therapy story. Yeah. And I think what you don't realize is like, I, she's not in my head mm -hmm. and I'm not in her head. Mm -hmm. So like, to her, actually, you should probably remember what you said. That was good. <laughs> uh, actions don't have meaning. It's the story you tell, tell you. Like, all I said was, where are you riding? And it was, you don't love me and I'm never right. coming again. <laughs> you don't appreciate everything I'm putting said into this marriage. Ain't nobody said nothing like that. <laughs> Ain't nobody said nothing like that. Um, but that's how we do. And the part of it is true is like, in order to make it work, you really got to let that go mm -hmm. a lot of times, whatever that is, because it's so much easier to sit in that feeling and be like, oh, for don't, sure. He don't to like stay me. Mad. And yeah. I'm not coming to no more tour stops. Mm -hmm. And I, you know what I'm saying? And in my head, the funny thing about the story, I was trying, cause I have a, what Melissa calls a takeover spirit. So what I wanted to say is, listen, come ride with me. Here's yeah. my car. But I'm like, that probably sounds too directive. Like, I actually had this conversation <laughs> in my head. If I say, come ride with me, she will be like, ah, maybe I want to ride with my sister. So I was like, okay, let me just ask her what was her plan. Yeah. And had I went with my first mind, I would have been right. <laughs> See, it's a, but it is kind of like, oh, I should have said the other thing. Yes. But it's like, women, are we hard to please? Yes. I mean, just a little bit. But, <laughs> yes. but let me tell you what was good about your guys' session, though. What your therapist was having you do 
by replaying or reenacting it was giving you guys an opportunity to actually replay, right? The scenario, but in the mindset and the consciousness of if I had the opportunity to choose differently. So yes. it gave you both an opportunity to hear the other person mm -hmm. say the things that you wanted to hear, but know that they're acknowledging and can actually deliver that thing. So it was yes. healing in the process healing the because word. you were able to hear the response that you actually wanted, but he was able to embrace it and he wasn't trying to stick to, no, that's the only way that I could have done it. I did it perfect. You're the one that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Instead, it gave you like the feeling of relief of, oh, he understands that he could do it better, that there's another way that it can be done and that his way isn't the only mm -hmm. way. I want you to want to do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was in that moment. I flew there. I want to feel wanted by you. Yeah. You know, and that's the and the best part about therapy and marriage with a committed relationship is I've been able to apply that lesson mm -hmm. 50, 100 times. Yeah. I'm able to say, hey, I would like to do this. I'll give you another quick example. I know we, we probably close to time or you probably I see your radio mind like I <laughs> but, and y'all want to know why I'm yeah. always late. Yeah. I'll give you I'm a joking, really good I'm example. Joking. I tour a lot. Right. And we have small kids. Well, not really small, but we have kids at home. So years ago, Melissa was like, we realized our, our youngest was like, y'all can't both be on the road because she used to be on the road with me. Yeah, that's right. He's like, well, I need some stability. So Melissa was like, I'll stay home. But she always does a certain amount of weekends. She comes out and, and sees the show. Always, always, always. So I remember one time we were in a city that that's like a great show city. And it was like going to be a little vacation. Right. And at the last second, she was like, oh, I can't come. You know, I was like, you coming to this tour stop? And in my mind, I had created this whole mm -hmm. weekend. We was going to go to brunch. Aww. I mean, Mari, I can see the brunch spot. Aww. I can see the menu. We're going to have a little mimosa, maybe two, <laughs> maybe unlimited. <laughs> clink, clink, clink. clink, clink. <laughs> We're going to do this. It wasn't even sex related. Like, in my mind, it was like yeah, the show, brunch, Aww. we'll have lunch, we'll go to whatever, right? And at the last second, I think she had whatever the opportunity was, she was like, oh, I'm just going to fly home early. So I let her go, and in my mind, I was like, dang, that's just terrible. Like, mm -hmm. that's whack. And I realized through therapy, yeah. my therapist helped me realize, and I didn't even realize this. I was asking her, are you coming to the show this weekend? Mm -hmm. What I was really saying was, I want to spend time with yep. you. I'm looking forward to yep. this time. I haven't seen you in a couple yep. of weeks. You know, when, when I'm on the road, you know, we feel more distant. So I was, I had this whole plan set up, but I didn't say any of that. Mm -hmm. And nor did she hear it. So she's just like, I got to go back home and yeah. do whatever. Like, I'm not tripping, whatever. So I think in that therapy moment, the therapist was like, if you feel, and it's a, it's a vulnerability thing for a man, mm -hmm. for me, I'm realizing it's much easier for me to say, you coming to Atlanta? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. I'll, I'll make the brunch. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll make the reservation. I got the hotel. But had I said, Melissa, I actually stuff. miss you. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to this time. Then she can be informed with that. Mm -hmm. said, oh, you were coming home to shoot a podcast. I'm like, in my head, I said, nigga, yo, no, you don't look. I'm oh, sorry, mm -hmm. I said, nigga. Um, <laughs> so now you want to come shoot a podcast and I don't matter. <laughs> oh, it's so more important to shoot this podcast. But I never let her feel my actual feeling. Yeah. I just said, are you coming to Atlanta? Right. That's not what I meant. So now my um, responsibility yeah. is to communicate that and... To leave it open that she can say, actually, I hear you, but this is really important yep. to me. I won't be able to do it this time, but maybe can we can do it that time. Yeah. Right? Because a lot of times for me and men probably too, if I say that vulnerable thing and it don't go my way, mm -hmm. then I feel like I'm never going to be vulnerable again mm -hmm. because I opened up. She didn't belittle me. She didn't poo-poo, yeah. none of that stuff, but it didn't work out. But I have to give her agency as well because she has her own life to live yeah. and her own things that she wants to do. So... And luckily for me, for the most part, if I say those things and I don't like to play that, it's big joker. You can't play it every hand. But I, if I say that, then Melissa will do her best yeah. to do that. And I think that's been much better than me just hoping she understands what I'm saying when I say you come to Atlanta. But it sounds like you were also, I'm going to use the word, uh, avoiding being soft with her. For sure. Because you were afraid of the rejection part. I, I would not even say of? it's rejection part. What, what I was think the holding us? What, why don't we articulate our feelings? So much of men, so much of our psyche is set up by society and being seen as weak. If if I am caught saying I miss you, mm -hmm. I want to spend time with you. 
we're not trained that these are okay things that you are yeah. to say. It's totally okay for me to say, here's the money, here's the rent, I paid for this, Yeah. here's the vacation. But to actually say, I'm looking forward to spending this time with you, we're not raised that that's an okay thing for a yeah. man to say and still be a man. It's considered weak, yep. even if it's not said like saying. these mm-hmm. words. They, so we don't never want to seem weak. Mm-hmm. So we naturally shy away from anything that can be seen as weak. Um, and then I realized like, these societal things harm your actual relationship. Yeah. You know, one dude on Twitter said, man, you know, she was talking about her, this lady was talking about my boyfriend's not romantic. He don't buy me flowers. He only buys me like vitamins and supplements. Oh, and this dude, Yeah. This dude was like a, a gangster. And he was like, Hey man, everybody got to be a little goofy for their girl. And it's like, that's the <laughs> truth. Like you really got to be a little bit goofy yeah. and let that side down with somebody who allows that of you. So I'm truly grateful. Melissa and her in our entire 25 year relationship, has never made me feel silly for being open. Because if you be vulnerable and that's made fun of or disrespected, you can forget about feeling safe enough to do that yeah, again. again. So You guys have two sons. Mm-hmm. Two sons, 18, 16. They're learning how to be men and partners from your relationship. Mm-hmm. What's yes. the greatest lesson that they are going to take away when they enter into romantic relationships? What are the, what's the that greatest a, lesson they're going to take away from you? What a great question. That's why you sit over there by yourself. Because <laughs> you think of questions like that. That is good. That is a really My because children you, will say. You, finish the blank. I realize, I'm going to answer your question, but I realize my dad taught me how to be a husband, and he never said, son, here's how you be a husband. Oh, mm. for sure. He just was an amazing, unconditional, loving father, mm. and he put the family first, and that's what I learned. Uh, what they are learning from me in regards to their mother, I feel like we have done. Wait, good- is that the question? Yes. What What will your children's lesson be? The great What will be the greatest lesson that they will have learned about relationship from your guys's marriage? Mm-hmm. At some time, they're going to have a partner of their own, right, right, right. and they're going to be like, "I grew up with the household where my mom and dad did." Da, 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 oh, da. I see, I see. What will be their takeaways about your guys's relationship? Oh, what, what will they say? Question. I think what they are learning, they are learning how to be physically affectionate. They see me hug and kiss their mom. And they also are learning, and I'll only say these two so you have plenty. They're learning that their our relationship comes before them. Mm. They have seen us, their entire relationship, here's the babysitter, we're going on a date. Yeah. We're going to dinner. We're going, now that they're old enough to stay by themselves, we're going to New York for the weekend, <laughs> feed the dog, give us some water. We're going on vacation. Like, they have seen that they are important yeah. to us. But we are more important to each other mm. than they are to us. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's I important. I think a lot of families put the kids above the relationship. Yep. They will f- never feel like they are not important. Mm-hmm. But they will n- probably never feel like they were more important to us than we were to each other. But you know who's going to appreciate it? Their wife later. I hope so. Their, their mm-hmm. partners later are going to be like, whew, <laughs> yeah. thank you. Yeah. Melissa, what, you what will the oh, man, boys learn from heart. your guys' relationship? I love this question. Okay, so I definitely agree. One of the first things that came to my mind was the importance of uh, family vacations and couple vacations. I think they'll... How to travel. Funny. Yeah, how to travel. <laughs> I think it's funny you said that because that was one of the Clearly, things. Clearly, because y'all staying at the Four Seasons and yeah, stuff. They know how to travel good. Yeah, they know how to <laughs> travel. And I would say the other one is... I don't know how to say this in words, um, but... How to either bet on yourself or bet on your partner. Mm. I think they have been, they've watched us and they're at an age now actually where they understand, oh, you guys work for yourself. Yeah. Oh, you guys are doing this and and doing everything you're doing off the backs of your own talent. Yeah. And what that looks like. Our oldest son um, just started college. He's been there for maybe four weeks, just about three weeks. Congratulations. It's It's like three weeks. He may be entering his fourth week. Anyway, the point is, (laughs) yeah. Um, uh, Anyway, the point is he um, doesn't have class. His first class doesn't start like one Mm o'clock. It's like 1250. So anyway, the first like day or two, he was um, getting up at like noon. Mm. And so by like day three, I was like, yeah, so no. Um, (laughs) You need to get up and find yourself some business. I said millionaires are made in the morning. He probably remember me saying that. I said millionaires are made in the morning. You need to get up. You can make your bed. You can make yourself breakfast. You can uh, uh, wash your clothes. You can go to the gym in the morning. There's so many things you can do with your morning because you in the afternoon, you're going to class. When you come home, you're going to eat dinner. You're going to go to bed. Your whole morning has been wasted. You didn't do anything. You need to get up. 
you need to find and what I tell them is get yourself some business mm. and it don't mean clock in and go to work because yeah. I understand you trying to figure it out but you can make that bed yep and your clothes are over you can set a schedule Monday and Tuesday you're gonna get up and wash clothes and on Wednesday and Thursday you'll fold them I don't know what it looks like my point is you need to figure that no out no idle time no idle time mm-hmm. why are you wasting your morning and so that to me is the start of what it means to be an entrepreneur yeah you don't have a set schedule you don't have um a job description yeah You make it up and you have to be and learn to be productive with your time. Get up and find yourself some business. (laughs) They're learning emotional intelligence from her as well. (laughs) Like my son, my oldest son, he's the youngest ain't been in no serious relationship yet. But my youngest son, my oldest son, he he was in a serious relative to his age. (laughs) And that boy was he was the second coming of Melissa. It was really adorable. He was Mm -hmm. like, I feel like X, Y, Z. I want to put his business out. But. It was like he has heard her he definitely did. talking yeah. on the phone, on podcasts, and he was more aware of, more aware of his feelings at 16, 17 mm. than a lot of adults are, even yeah. myself. I mean, like He was more aware of what he wanted in a relationship. He was able to communicate that. Yeah, he he saw where it was good he, going. He was able to stand in his beliefs. I was like, dang, you is your mama's baby. Yeah, but I love this too because it speaks to what you were afraid of when all the work, it, it took you, I don't know, let's just say you're, 30, 40, um, took you all (laughs) his years to become this vulnerable person who's able to articulate that. He's doing it at 16. That is a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Like for him to be able to express how he feels and almost sounds like based on your marriage, he has learned how to redefine strong because according to what you thought was strength Mm -hmm. may not have been what strength is. But now with him being able to speak power into his words and this is how I feel and be able to like for sure feel confident in articulating that that is incredible. We want more men in the world like that. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you, Melissa. No, and, right. and Kevin. Okay. We do job. have to wrap up. Right. I appreciate you guys so much and always blessing us with your insight on your marriage and relationship. You are going to let everybody know where they can find you, where they can get your content, the projects you have coming out, plug everything. I want everybody to be able to have access to you. Kev on stage, wherever you are at, except TikTok, Kev on stage, TikTok. <laughs> but if you put my name in, you'll find me. Um, when is this coming out? A couple weeks. Go to KevOnStage.com. Whatever I'm working on, whenever you are whenever you listen to this, now or five years from now, go to KevOnStage.com. I'm about to go on tour, so that's the most important thing. If you live in L.A., that, that show's early. And I'll leave you some tickets, Marty. Please. Thank uh, you so much. Bring the whole team, man. <laughs> bring your husband. Leave we the baby. Okay. Uh, what do you want, baby? Uh, uh, Miss Kev on stage on all platforms as well. And, um, and we'll pray for the future projects. <laughs> Yay. Thank you guys so much. You guys can always play with my Twitter, stroke my IG at spicy Mari. Go to the spicy <laughs> Click and subscribe. Share this episode with a friend. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The spicy life. Kill. Play with my Twitter stroke. <laughs> Your nail like, color is so pretty. Wait, I just realized midway. I'm like, we're wearing the, the same yeah, color. Yeah, we're totally matching. <laughs>